everyone, it's Mia and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing a complete beginner's guide to Bible reading. First, we'll talk about what the Bible is and why it's so important. Then we'll do a quick overview of the history of the Bible and what the Bible's about. And then finally, we'll talk about where to start, what translation to use, and beneficial tips to help you understand and get the most out of reading the Bible. Okay, let's get started. First, what is the Bible? The Bible isn't just one long book. The Bible is basically just a bunch of historical documents that was compiled into one. All of the books in the Bible was written in a time span of 1,500 years, and historians will affirm this. And there's over 40 different authors. And the coolest part is it tells one big unified story. The reason why the Bible is so important to Christians is because it is God's word. God chose 40 different authors and he wrote through them. This is how God speaks to us. Now, since the Bible is a compilation of many different books and authors, there are different writing styles and literature. The three main types of literature is history, poetry, and prophecy. And because there are different writing styles, you can interpret everything all the same. Here's an example. If you're reading poetry, there are many symbols that are used that aren't supposed to be taken literally. When reading prophecy, poetry, and the symbolism, it's not about the exact words. It's about the picture the author is trying to paint because the fullness of God's word can't even be expressed with just man's language. But now when you read a historical book, you obviously take that literally, at least the parts that are meant to be taken literally. If there is symbolism used in a historic book, then the author will make that clear. So whatever book you're reading, just keep in mind the writing style so you can properly interpret it. Before Jesus, the people had no way to have a close relationship with God because of their sins and because God is so holy. And because God is just and can't let sin go unpunished, in order for the people to have a relationship with God, they had to follow strict ceremonial laws and do animal sacrifices. God did not want it to be this way forever. So God promised that one day there would be a coming Messiah that would be the ultimate sacrifice to take away the sins from all the people of the world. So when Jesus comes in the New Testament, he becomes the ultimate sacrifice and therefore reconciles us to God so we can now have a relationship, a close relationship with God through Jesus. By believing and following Jesus, God can justly forgive us from our sins. The four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are eyewitness testimonies to the life Jesus lived while here on earth. It's all the same story told from four different perspectives. Matthew's gospel is written to a Jewish audience, so he quotes the Old Testament a lot and shows all the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. So if you know about the Old Testament, you'll really appreciate Matthew because your mind will be blown. You're gonna be like, whoa, like thousands of years later, Jesus fulfilled all these prophecies. Prophecy is just one of the ways knowing that the Bible is truly the word of God because hundreds and hundreds of years before things happen, the Bible said it was gonna happen. Even historians like conclude, yes, like this was written that long ago. Hundreds of years later, it actually happened. So it's pretty awesome. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the first three gospels are called the synoptic gospels. They contain a lot of the same content just from different points of view. But John's gospel is a little bit different and contains stories that aren't in the first three gospels. And John is written to a Gentile audience. Gentile in this context means anyone that's not a Gentile. Acts is the second part of Luke and is the final historic book in the New Testament. Acts shows the first 15 years of the early church and how it was spread. After the five historic books come the epistles, and epistles means letters. So the epistles are the letters that the apostles wrote to different individuals or churches. And the rest of the New Testament are the epistles, besides the last book in the Bible, which is Revelation. Revelation means to reveal. So the book of Revelation is prophecy and reveals what is to come in the future. The book of Revelation is really awesome because it shows about the second coming of Christ, 
what's gonna happen at the end of the world, pers- the persecution Christians are gonna have to go through, and then Jesus' second coming in, the new creation of the new heaven and the new earth. But all prophecy is very hard, very hard to understand because it's mainly all symbolic visions and talks about heavenly things and you need to know a lot of history to really understand prophecy. You need to read Old Testament books to understand Revelation. If you're a beginner, please don't start with that book. So. I told you not to start with prophecy. Where should you start? Pretty much every Christian agrees that you should start with the gospels. And again, most everyone along with myself agrees that it's good to start with John because John was written to a non-Jewish audience. So you won't have to know a lot about the Old Testament to understand. And also the gospel of John is good to start with because there are no parables and parables can be so hard and frustrating to understand if you're completely new to the gospel message and the Bible. But the more you mature in your faith, reading parables becomes fun because the Holy Spirit reveals to you the deeper meaning. But at first, if you're just beginning and you're very new to the gospel message, it can be hard. So that's why it's good to start with John. And then after John, I recommend reading Matthew, which has the life-changing Sermon on the Mount. If you read both John and Matthew, you'll get a good understanding and a big picture of who Jesus is, what he did, and how awesome he is. And then after that, I recommend reading Acts. So then you can understand the history of how the church was spread. After Acts, read the rest of the New Testament, which is the letters of the apostles besides Revelation. Don't read the last book quite yet. Okay, so you know where to start, but what translation should you use? I recommend starting with the NLT, the New Living Translation. However, it is a thought for thought translation and it's a very beginner's translation, which is okay. If you're just starting out, you have to start somewhere. I do recommend starting with that because it'll clear up a lot of confusion. However, once you have been reading it for a while and you're ready, I recommend changing over to the ESV, which is more of a word for word translation. Okay, now that you know where to start and what version to read, let me share with you guys some really helpful reading and Bible study tips to help you get the most out of reading God's word. Number one, get a good Bible study or commentary. I really like doing this because it gives you good historical context. I use Blue Letter Bible and they have great commentaries. It goes so in depth, verse by verse, word by word, and they give great historical context before a quick overview. It goes really in depth. And if you wanna just sit down and read the whole thing, it'll take really long. <laughs> also, BibleRef.com, I use all the time. Read the chapter first on your own. And if you have questions, reference the commentary. But it's also good to read the commentary just for the historical context and not always just the interpretation. So don't rely on the interpreter, rely on the Holy Spirit to interpret it for you. Number two, note questions you have, but don't stop right away and look up what it means. At least finish the chapter and then look up the question because whenever I got to one verse I didn't understand, I'd be like, what does that mean? And then I'd like look it up and then I'd spend a lot of time wasted on that and then I went back to the text and then it literally explained it a few verses down. So be patient. If you're confused a lot of times, it answers it for you later. Okay, number three. If you have a computer or iPad or even phone, get the Bible app and keep it open while you're reading. Cause with the Bible app, you can compare two translations side by side, which is really a helpful tip. Cause I read through the ESV cause it's more of a word for word. But if I'm confused on just how something is worded, I'll look at the NLT, which usually clears it up right away. I also always keep it open because it's really helpful when looking up definitions. All you have to do is highlight the word and then right click and hit look up and you can find the definition in like 0.5 seconds. Number four, get a Bible journal or a journaling Bible. Use this to write down any thoughts, revelations or questions you have. Number five, highlight verses that stick out to you. Don't get too caught up in color coding your Bible because I got caught up in that, but that just, honestly, it takes way too long. Personally, in my opinion, it can be helpful if you're trying to like color code specific things, but if you're just a new beginner, don't get too caught up in that. Just highlight verses that stick out to you that you want to be able to reference easily and then rewrite them in your Bible journal. Number six, Make a plan to 
at least read a certain amount a day. If you're a beginner, say, hey, I'm gonna read at least one chapter a day. Or, hey, I'm gonna read at least 10 minutes a day or 15 minutes or 30 minutes. There's also a bunch of like Bible reading plans that are already made. There's a Bible in a year plan where it takes you through the whole Bible in a year. There's the New Testament in a year. There's a 10 minute a day, a chapter a day plan. The chronological plan where it takes you chronologically through the New Testament. There's just a bunch of plans out there. Number seven, read in a quiet place with no distractions. If you have noise canceling headphones, put those on. Put on some Bible reading music. It helps so much with concentration. Number eight, set aside a specific time each day for your quiet time to read God's word. If you set the intention to read it every day at a specific time, you will see yourself growing closer to God. And it's amazing. I recommend doing this first thing in the morning to start your day on the right path. Get a cup of coffee in the early morning with the sunrise, with your nice music playing. It, it's just amazing. I actually just made a video on ways to grow closer to God. So if you're really trying to seek God, please go check out that video. And the most important thing before you start reading your Bible, is to pray before, during, and after. Ask God to give you the wisdom and understanding. Ask him to help you retain what you have read and then to live it out in your life. If you're confused on a verse, ask the Holy Spirit to help guide you and interpret it for you. Seek God and you will find him. Well guys, that is the complete beginner's Bible reading guide. I hope this video has blessed you and I hope it has inspired you to start reading the Bible. If you learned something new today, please comment below what it is. I'm very interested to see if I gave any information that someone may not have known. So comment below. Okay, <laughs> that's all I have for today's video. I will see you all next week. Bye. Oh no, it died. Thank you.